Um, so I'll just go through um, setting up one of the more uh, basic assignment types um, and setting them all up is basically the same, um, but I will go through the individual assignment. Um, so first of all, to access the video assignment tool, you would go to your course homepage, click on the submit menu, and then select video assignment. So basically, um, just in its most simplest form, the video assignment is a way for students to record or upload a video um, and or associated files for assessment. Um, to quote Bongo, um, video assignments are structured workflows that individuals complete asynchronously. Organizations use these video exercises to facilitate repeated skill practice, peer-to-peer -peer collaboration, and the application of knowledge within a real-world context. So once individuals complete a video assignment, they submit their recording for personalized feedback and coaching. So there are four assignment types, um, individual, which we're about to go through. Uh, there are also group assignments, question and answer, and interactive video. So in this session, um, like as I said, we'll go through the video, uh, or sorry, the individual assignment setup. And this includes um, the setup of the assignment straight through to grading. And then we'll take a look at the other three assignment types, um, their possible use cases and what features they offer. So in an individual assignment, a learner's recorder upload a video of themselves presenting on a topic or demonstrating a specific skill. With the screen share feature, learners can also enhance their project with visual aids. Um, so we'll just get started with the setting up the assignment. So in the bottom right corner, you'll see this little plus sign um, with the ad pops up when you hover over it. So if you click on that, um, you'll see icons for each of the assignment types. So the one with just a single person, um, you would click on to create an individual assignment. So I will click on that. Um, and then the assignment name is a required field. Um, so I'll just call this individual assignment for February 5th today. And then the due date and time are optional. So once you click on the due date, um, it pops up this little window and you can pick um, the day that you want the assignment to be due. Um, so we'll make it due on Monday. We'll select the 8th and then we'll just click OK. And then once we come over to the due time, which is also an optional field, um, you have this um, funny little wheel thing. So the first thing that you need to do is make sure that the hour is highlighted and then you can select the hour by clicking on um, the little circle and then just dragging it around the circle. So if we want it to be um, due at like 830, you would select eight. Then we would click on the double zeros to then select the minutes. And then we would just grab that and then drag it around to 8.30. And then you can select AM or PM just by clicking on it. Um, but we'll use AM for now. And then we'll just click OK. So the due date and time in Bongo are soft, um, meaning that nothing will prevent a student from submitting after that uh, due date and time. Um, it's more just there so that the students know when it should be assigned um, and completed by. And then we have evaluation type is the next field. So I'll click on this because it's a bit of a drop down menu and there are a few options that you can select. So there is the percentage, which is out of 100. The auto analysis, um, which is only used for uh, individual assignments. 
You can create a rubric and associate the rubric with the assignment. Um, however, these are Bongo rubrics um, and the learn rubrics uh, can't be used within Bongo. There's also a pass and fail, um, which will assign a score of either zero or 100%. And then there is an auto pass, um, which when a student submits, they receive 100%. And then there's also the five star rating scale. So each star is worth 20%. Um, so if you select four stars, then the student would get 80%. And um, so for this assignment, we'll select percentage. And then the next field is instructions, which are required. Um, so I'll just type some instructions in here. And then you also have the option of recording instructions using your webcam um, and mic if you want to do a video of the instructions. Um, and then for the auto analysis um, section, I'll pass that over to Despina. Okay, so um, there's a few things with auto analysis. Um, one thing is it can be used as your grade type, as Tammy showed a little earlier, and it basically is a built-in tool that will produce a transcript of the recorded video students submit where um, they can use the transcript to and the flags in the transcript to identify if they're using too many filler words, if their speech is incoherent, um, if they're using pre-populated terms, which is another option with the auto analysis. If you have a set of terms that you want each of your students to use within their presentation, you can add them here. And the auto analysis will track the number of times each term is used. And it will give you a little graph and them a little graph of what words were used and the frequency with which they were used. Um, and yeah, thanks, Tammy. And then um, I'm also going to talk about peer review, which is just below the auto analysis. Um, the options for setting up peer review are automatic. Um, yeah, there, Tammy, thank you. Um, automatic, which is uh, system selected. So basically, it will just auto assign students into peer review groups. There's also the manual option, which um, when you use the manual option, each time a student comes in to provide a peer review, the same learner will be listed at the top of that list. So there can be some concerns of students all evaluating the same learner um, or peer. So one thing to keep in mind is that if you are using that set, uh, setting, the manual setting, you might want to uh, let your students know to look for students in uh, peers that do not have reviews before they review someone who already has one. And then beneath that, you have the option of dates as well. So you can allow peer review before someone submits. You can conceal the reviewer identity and the submitter identities, but if you're using videos and your students know who each other are, that kind of defeats the purpose of concealing the identity because they'll see them in the video. Underneath those settings, you have the option of setting the number of required reviews. Again, this is another soft deadline with um, Bongo. So even if you set it at three, students could theoretically peer review every single classmate in the course who submitted the assignment. You also have the option of review type. Tammy, can you click on that five star and just show what the options are, please? Thank you. So you can see there's none, which means they would just be required to provide a comment. If you use five star, then they are required to provide the five star rating as well as a comment. And then assignment rubric is also an available option for peer review, but it will only appear here if when you scroll up to the um, assessment type percentage there and change that to rubric, evaluation type apologies. And if you select rubric here, You'll see on the right a new, oh, sorry, Tammy, can you stay up at the top? 
yeah, so on the right, you still have to select the rubric that you're going to use. Um, yep, there, perfect. So if you select a rubric here, then when you scroll back down to the peer review section and choose the review type, you can now choose that assignment rubric for the assignment. Now, this rubric is different than if you're using a group assignment, which we will talk about. Um, when you're using a group assignment, you can have a separate rubric for team evaluations where group members evaluate each other within their groups. And that doesn't need to be used as the assignment rubric type. So just one slight different functionality there. Um, and yeah, back to you, Tammy, or actually maybe going to Tanya. Uh, yeah, so we're just going to finish setting up the individual assignment and then I will take over and show grading and things like that. Right, everyone can see my screen then. Yeah, okay, that's good. Thank you. So I'm just going to go submit and then video assignment, and I'm going to find our assignment from today. So I'm just going to click on the kebab and look at what we've done. So I'm going to switch us back to percentage just for ease, and I'm also going to turn off the peer review and auto analysis for this assignment. Um, because I want to be just simple when I go through as the test, test student and do the grading and things like that. Um, and since they won't have any peer review to complete, I'm just going to turn those off. So. OK, so one gotcha with Bongo is. You can see everything when you as an instructor, when you go to submit and then video assignment. But if a student came in right now and they went submit and video assignment, they would not see this individual assignment from February 5th. So what you need to do first is create a link to the assignment in your content area. And then students will use that link the, the first time they um, access any uh, Bongo assignments. After they've accessed it through that LTI link the first time, then they can go to submit and video assignment and they will see it listed. So that's just one thing to keep in mind if you have students say that they can't see um, their video assignment. It may be because they haven't gone through that LTI link in content yet. So I'm going to do that now. So I'm just going to go to content. And I'll show two ways of doing it. So the most common way is just adding it directly to your table of content. So I already have a module created um, called creating video assignment links. So I'm just going to click upload create and scroll. Oh, sorry, no. Sorry. <laughs> click existing activities and then scroll down and you'll see video assignment at the bottom. And then I'm going to find the one that was created today. So that's this one and just click that. And there's your link created for your students. The other option, um, if you prefer to have the link directly on an HTML page that you've created, then you would go to your, for example, assignment page and then edit HTML. And I'm just going to highlight video assignment text because that's where I want to put my link. And sorry, I'm going to click the quick link um, tool and then scroll down. And then again, it's video assignment under third party in this case. And then I'm going to insert my, uh, the link to the assignment there. And then um, it's up to you if you want it to open up in a new window. I don't know how many of you are comfortable with code, but one quick way is if you just go into the code and then you look for the target associated with that link and you can switch it to blank and save. Um, you can also click on the link and then click back on quick link and you can set it here. The You can set the target here as well. That's a more straightforward way. Um, it's whatever you're more comfortable with. And I'm just going to click update and then save and close. So there's now a link to the assignment from this HTML page. Okay, so the next thing um, I'm going to do is actually impersonate a test student because I want to set up um, my grade item and make sure that my grade book's all set up before students start submitting. Um, so I'm going to go to connect 
and then class lists. And then I'm going to go to the test student tab. And then I'm going to impersonate test student one. So I'm just going to click the down arrow next to that student and then click impersonate. And then yes. Great, then I'm going to, as the student now, go to content and to that module, and I am going to access the assignment that's been created. And so now you can see um, what the student sees. So it shows them when the assignments do, the instructions here, um, the video instructions, if we had included them, would be here as well. And then the work in progress area is where they can add their files. <clears throat> which I'll do right now. And I just want to mention a couple things about files. Um, so the max file size um, for video submissions is 20 gigabytes for Bongo. So definitely a benefit mm -hmm. over Learn, which has a max size of one gig, and which we often never recommend either because while you're doing the Dropbox upload, it likely will time out before it ever gets to one gig anyway so that's a great benefit of using bongo for video assignments um, students can also submit documents so files um, and the max size for documents is 100 megabytes so it's quite a bit smaller but it makes sense given the file type so i am just gonna upload just a regular word document um, because when you do upload a video it does take time to process um, so I'm just going to do a file. I'm going to select the file, select this test document. OK, and as a student, too, if I wanted to, I can do a video and files. Um, I can do a link um, and a meeting. Uh, the one thing as well to note is students cannot submit more than one video. So if they have two videos, there is an option that will allow them to combine it into a single video and so that that can be submitted. Um, so I'm just going to submit or move, sorry, my assignment file to the submission area and I'm going to click submit. OK. So that's all I need to do right now is the test student. So I'm going to stop impersonating by clicking in the top right corner on test student and then clicking the X. So now as the instructor, I'm going to go in to the video assignment, so back to submit and then video assignment. And the next section I'm going to go to, so we've done configure, so now I'm going to click overview. And I'll just talk, talk a little bit actually about this um, insights dashboard. So what this tells you is the number of students who have not viewed the assignment, the number who have viewed the assignment, how many students have their assignment in progress? So perhaps they've added files to that in progress area, but they haven't actually submitted anything. How many students have submitted and the submission needs evaluation? Uh, and when you do evaluate, you can save as draft or publish right away. So the number evaluated could be a combination of published and draft or just draft um, or all published. Um, and then down here we have how many um, students have published grades. So that's that. Um, so if I scroll down, we have our list of learners and we can see for test student one, it says needs evaluation. So I'm just going to click on that. And you can see as well on the left, you can navigate between different students. If you wanted to go back to that dashboard, that overview, you would just click here and that will take you back. So I just wanted to show that really quickly. OK, so we had chosen percentage for um, our evaluation type. So I'm just going to put in 85%. Um, so here's the option to save as draft and save and publish. Um, so I am going to um, just save and publish right now since we only have the one student for this demonstration. So save and publish. And then I will show you down here. Um, this is the um, submitted file. Um, if it was a video, the video would be rendered here in its own player. And then you'd be able to add comments um, as well that the student will be able to see. And so you can watch the video and insert comments at different timestamps, etc. OK. So now if I go to grades, what should have happened is because I've entered a score and published it, Bongo will now automatically create a grade item. 
for us. So here it is down here. It will be under, sorry, out of 100 max points, and the weight is currently set to zero, so you can change that to what it should be. Uh, so I'll just click on the grade item, and let's say it was worth 25% of the final grade, so I can adjust the grade, or sorry, the weight there. And then, you, yeah, you can, before students have started submitting, you can have this grade item incorporated already into your grade book. Are, just gonna look to see if there's anything else I wanted to mention quickly. Okay, so that's it for, those are the basics of the individual assignment and grading. Um, what we're gonna do, which I'm gonna do quickly for the rest of this um, session is just go over sort of a brief overview of the other three assignment types. We won't be creating them when they're pre-created, but I'll show you the settings um, that are available. But this might be a good place to break just in case there are any questions. There's one in the chat that it looks like Tammy's replying to. So I think okay. you can go ahead and we'll deal with that through the chat. Okay, great. Okay, so I'm first going to look at probably what's the second most popular after individual assignment would be the group assignment. So I'm going to go back to video assignment. And then I am going to go through the settings for a group project. So um, again, if you wanted to start a new one, you would click the red circle with the plus sign. And if you hover over group, create group assignment is the second one here. Um, but we're not going to do that today because I already have one. So I'm just gonna go into the settings. So again, it's the kebab and then configure. One other thing I want to mention, which I don't recall if we mentioned earlier, is there's a kebab up here as well that will take you to uh, Bongo help documentation. Um, so I just wanted you to be aware that that's there. Uh, we also have, there's also Bongo doc documentation in IST's knowledge base, um, which we can put a link to in the ch chat if there isn't already one. Okay, so I'm going to go into my group assignment here, and then I'm going to go configure to get to the settings. And when I like, what I like to do before I start is just go right to the bottom and click show advanced because this exposes all the settings at once so I don't miss anything. Um, so as Tammy mentioned, with the individual assignment, setting assignments up, the settings themselves are all very similar across the four types, which is nice. Um, okay, so for the group assignment, we would put the title in. Um, again, the due date, which is soft, but we've already got February 15th there. And then I don't, we'll make it due at 1 p.m. Why not? And then the evaluation type chosen here is percentage. Um, again, it's very similar to individual assignment. You add your instructions. Um, so here we've just said create and submit your group presentation. If we'd wanted to, we could have also added video instructions. There's also post submission instructions that students will see after they've submitted if you want to add those. And next we have our tool set. So here's what you can decide to enable or disable for students. So um, there's video enabled. Um, then we have documents enabled. And then lastly, uh, meetings enabled. So what meetings enabled will allow students to do if you uh, keep it enabled is they can uh, schedule a meeting amongst each other. And then in that virtual classroom meeting, so it's basically under connect, we have virtual classroom. So they're scheduling a virtual classroom uh, meeting. And then in that meeting, they can um, record um, their conversation, they can share their screen, et cetera. And then that recording can actually, um, will be saved and can be submitted as their project. So it can be the video that they submit as part of this group assignment. Uh, so one case for that was um, students at a French course had to do a sort of a language, sort of conversational French language assignment. And so they recorded themselves asking each other different questions um, and that recording was their submission. So just enable or disable, whatever you want to keep. And then for the group options, we have educator formed, which is the most common. And that's basically the instructor, uh, you as the instructor would go in and form the groups. Um, 
One unfortunate thing is that groups in Learn are not tied to groups in Bongo. So if you have already groups in Learn, you need to replicate them um, here. Uh, learner formed means learners can join their own groups and form their own group. And then system formed, basically you pick a date and time that the system will create the groups. And prior to that, students can indicate their availability and the system will do its best um, to create the groups based on that availability, which is actually quite nice, um, especially now with students being all over the world and you know, not necessarily all in the Waterloo region. So that's something you might want to make use of. And then team evaluation is uh, allows group members to evaluate each other. Um, so you can keep it disabled. You can do the five star. And this is the one place you can choose rubric, even if rubric isn't chosen as your evaluation type. And then there is also peer review, which can be done for group um, assignments. Um, and when using peer review with group assignments, the peers that are reviewed are other groups, not members of the group they belong to. So that would be, if you wanted that, that's you would use team evaluation. Um, yeah, so students in group one would review submissions from other groups. Um, and the settings are similar to what Despina described before. So again, automatic, manual, <clears throat> concealing reviewer and submitter identity, number of reviews, et cetera. And then here's the rubric self-assessment, which is disabled because I do not have rubric chosen as my evaluation type. Okay, so I'm not gonna enable peer review for this one. So that's basically it. I'm just gonna hit save. Oh, yeah. Yes. Scott's got his hand up and I think oh, he's okay. typing. So I'm not sure if he'd prefer to just ask. I'll just ask. Sure. Um, so for the, uh, if you set up peer review for the group stuff, it's individuals reviewing submissions from other groups. Is that correct? Like it's not groups evaluating groups, it's individuals evaluating groups. Is that correct? Right? Yeah. So okay. if Tammy, Despina, and I are in group one, individually we would uh, review submissions from other groups. It wouldn't be group one reviewing group two, it would be Tammy reviewing the submission from group two. Yeah, perfect. Okay, yeah. thanks. Thanks, Scott. Okay, so next up is I'm going to show, just go into the manage groups to show you how that's done. So I had selected uh, educator formed. So I'm just going to click the kebab and then go into manage groups. And then we're going to do manual creation. So now the one nice thing is you can't integrate your groups automatically from learn, but if you have more than one group assignment, vid, or group video assignment, you can, and you want to use the same groups, you can copy those from a different assignment. But uh, so we're just going to do manual creation. If you don't see everybody, it looks like you're missing someone, you can synchronize your roster. So that'll look at the learns class list and sync everything up. So I'm just going to say I want two groups. So I'm do create groups, and then I'm just going to change it to two and do create, and it's just dragging and dropping. So do this and do these three. Um, if at this point, if after that I've formed the groups, um, let's say test student one has contributed to the group assignment, they will become locked into group one and you'll see a lock beside their name um, and you'll no longer be able to move them if, for example, you needed to rebalance groups or something like that. So just something to keep in mind if you do run into that. And I'm going to click save. And that's it. And as well, until the groups are formed, students won't be able to access the assignment through that LTI link. They'll get a message that they're not in the group. Um, so it's one other th thing to note. And let me just see what else I wanted to say about group assignments. Oh yeah, so when you're grading um, group assignments, I don't know. Oh, I'm sorry. Figure. <laughs> third time, I'll get it the third time, I promise. Oh, <laughs> sorry. Uh, no, so when you are grading a group assignment, um, I'm not gonna be able to show you with that one. Let me see if I have. Why don't you come back to this and I'll submit to the group assignment? That's what you're after for, right? The grade? Yeah, I thought, okay, here we go. So I, yeah, I'd, oh, I knew I had it somewhere. I just had to think for a minute where. So um, 
when you enter the score for the group, um, it'll give them, say we give them 90%, it'll give that score to everybody. Down here though, you can say, let's say, Tammy, just you heard she didn't contribute as much as she should have. Uh, so you can then individually adjust the score for Tammy. And then one other thing to note, that's another kind of a gotcha. If there is a, it's, if it was a group assignment where not every student needed to go into the group assignment for whatever reason, they didn't need to access it. And only let's say test student one went in, submitted the group's presentation for assessment. Um, and then Tammy and Andrew had never actually accessed the assignment. The grade won't pass to the grade book for Tammy and Andrew, it'll only go for the test students. So you'll need to go into the grade book and manually into the learn grade book and manually enter the grade for Tammy and Andrew. Um, we're hoping that Bongo will address this for a future release, but that's how it's behaving right now. So that's something I want to mention. Okay. And then down here, so this was an example of group assignment with peer review. So here we can see this is the group submission. And then these are comments made by test student two, who's from a different group. And this was the rating that they gave. Okay, so that's group assignment. Um, so next we're gonna move on to question and answer. So a question and answer assignment, the student is presented with video and or text prompts and they have a specific amount of time to respond using the video recording tool. And you can choose to begin recording them right away to capture the reaction, thereby replicating a high stakes face-to-face -face scenario like an interview. So here is the one we already have. So I'm going to go in to configure. Again, we have our title. In this case, I have not put dates in. I have not put a date and time in. Um, I've stuck with the percentage evaluation type. Um, so I've been explicit in the instructions about what the students are required to do and how much time they're going to have. Um, and the text instructions, again, are required. You can also do video instructions. Sorry, I'm just going to pop down there. And then there's the post submission instructions if you want to include those. Okay, so um, here you can see um, that I've created uh, three questions. You can do a maximum of 20. And then you can also uh, select whether it's active or not. So if it's unchecked, if active is unchecked, that question won't be delivered to students. Um, and I've done text with video in this case, but question text is required. Um, the reason everything for me is grayed out right now is because I have <coughs> submissions to this assignment. Um, if you want me to show you quickly, it's pretty straightforward. You go add question and then you just enter in the question text and add the video if you want to, and that's basically it. Um, and then here on the side is how you can reorder your questions. If I scroll down, um, so the settings, you can do camera only or camera and screen, which means they have to re show or they have to share their screen while they're doing the recording. Um, you can allow retake if you want to. Here, um, I've not set that though. And then I have chosen to record the reaction because um, this is sort of like a mock interview. Um, so you don't, you know, like in real life, you don't have, you know, <laughs> a 10 second delay before you have to answer. So it'll start recording them right away. And then there is random question mode that you can enable. So that's basically like a question pool to randomly deliver your questions in um, a different order for every student. And then here you can set the minimum amount of time they need to record themselves and then the max. Uh, peer review again is an option. It's not, from what I gather, it's not as common to do peer review with this type of assignment, um, but the options are all uh, the same as the other assignments. So, so that's um, that's that assignment type. And when the student submits, one thing I'll mention is they'll go through the questions and they'll record themselves, and then um, Bongo will uh, combine all those videos into a single video submission that you can then view. When it... Okay, so it's going to click save. 
And then the last one is interactive video. Uh, so in an interactive video assignment, students watch an instructor provided video and respond to related prompts, which can be multiple choice or video response. And again, up to 20 questions. So let's go into the one we have here. And I won't go through the top anymore. I think it's pretty clear, but you can see the one option that's missing is the evaluation type. Um, and I'll, I'll show you why that is in a minute. So again, instructions. So here I just said, as you watch the video, answer the questions when prompted. Um, you can add your own video. And here's the actual video that is gonna be used for this assignment. And so what you basically do is you have an option between, you can do multiple choice questions and video response questions. Uh, those are the only two types. And then students, as they watch the video, uh, will be prompted with the question um, at different timestamps. And so you can either sort of scroll to that timestamp as you play it and create, click create question. <laughs> or if you know the timestamp, just click create question and enter um, the time that the prompt is supposed to appear. And then you choose your question type. So we'll do multiple choice here and and we'll add the question text and then that's option a we'll do a b and a c uh, you could put feedback text in and then we'll say that b is correct and then okay and then i have to determine uh what percentage everything is worth so i'm going to say uh the multiple choice is worth five percent each and then the system will automatically um, determine that the video response then is worth 85% out of a total of 100. And then again, peer review. Oops, I did not follow my own rules and click show advance. So I'm just gonna scroll back up and make sure I didn't miss anything. No, okay. Um, and then the one last setting is you can force retaking multiple choice questions. So basically we have to get um, the question right before they can move on. Okay. And that's it for the remaining uh, assignment types.